Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. There are tons of big games in week one, but there are none bigger than the one taking place on Saturday night when number five Georgia takes on number three Clemson in Charlotte, the most anticipated college football game of the year. We have been hyping this game up. We have been talking about this game ever since the 2020 season ended. When Alabama beat Ohio State in that national championship, our attention turned to 2021, and it was all about this week one matchup in Charlotte. The game of the year. Two great teams, two great quarterbacks, two great coaches, two college football playoff contenders, and this game, guys, feels like a college football playoff matchup in just week one. A college football playoff matchup, a top five matchup in week one. One And guys, these are two college football playoff contenders. This very well could be the first of two meetings between Georgia and Clemson if both were, of course, to make the college football playoff by season's end. The stakes are high on Saturday night in Charlotte. And we all know that the loser of this game will have no room for error the rest of the season if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. So before we break down this game, guys, the offense, the defense, and who we have winning this top five matchup in Charlotte, again, we want to welcome you back to the Gridiron Expert. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. We have college football videos daily from now until the end of the season. We've predicted every team, and now we're here finally getting to break down the games. It's our favorite thing to do. This, of course, is our game of the week. Also, make sure to check out everything down in the description below. We have so much exclusive content there for you guys, including... Our expert picks, our week one expert picks come out tomorrow. They come out every single Wednesday. And the NFL picks will be joining the college football picks next Wednesday, right before the NFL season starts. So sign up for our expert picks today. You can sign up for the college package, the NFL package, or the combo, which we highly recommend because you want to get both of them. But sign up for those today before the season really gets going so you don't miss out on any of our analysis, any of our picks there. Like we always say, help us help you sign up for the expert picks and check out everything down in that description below because I promise you, you do not want to miss out on it. So let's talk football. Let's talk Georgia Clemson. Again, we've been talking about this game for months on end now and now it's finally here. We're just a few days away and let's go ahead and start for me on the offensive side of the ball. Let's start there and let's start with Georgia. Let's start with the Bulldogs and what they're going to bring to the table offensively on Saturday night. Uh, well, we know that the big storyline for Georgia and the big reason that people are so high on them is, yes, we know they're a very well-coached team with Kirby Smart. Yes, we know they have a great defense, but they finally have a quarterback. They finally have a quarterback in JT Daniels. He is given, has given Georgia the missing piece. Uh, not to, you know, say bad things about Jake Fromm and everything else that has happened before JT Daniels arrived, but no quarterback under Kirby Smart, and obviously that was pretty much Jake Fromm, no quarterback under Kirby Smart has been able to put up the numbers like JT Daniels has. And he did that in just four games. Threw for over 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns in four games. Keep this in mind, under JT Daniels, he had two 300-yard passing games. Half of the games he played in, he had at least 300 yards. Prior to that, in all the years that Kirby Smart's been in Athens, he only had four 300-yard passing games. JT Daniels is the missing piece. He is the guy that can stretch the field. He is the guy that can go vertical down the field. It gives them that vertical attack, something that Georgia really has not had over these last few years. So he is finally the big-time starter. He wasn't the starter to begin last year. Obviously, he was battling an injury. But when he was under center, Georgia was almost unstoppable. We know that he has a great running back duo with Zamir White and James Cook in the backfield. But the major question for Georgia offensively now is who is going to catch the passes from JT Daniels. Georgia is injury riddled both offensively and defensively, but obviously in the pass catching core, they are struggling right now. We know George Pickens will not be playing. We know Dominic Blaylock will most likely not be playing. Darnell Washington should not be playing. They're injury riddled. They have Arik Gilbert, but right now he's dealing with personal issues. Probably will not be playing. So JT Daniels is struggling to find himself some pass catchers to try to exploit this Clemson defense. Yes, we know they have Kyrus Jackson. Yes, we know have, they have Jermaine Burton. Hopefully both of them will be playing. We have no indication to believe they will not. But outside of them, there's really not that many guys. And obviously the biggest pass catchers, Blaylock, Pickens, even Washington, they're not going to be there. So what is Georgia going to do offensively to exploit this Clemson defense? Again, very injury riddled. JT Daniels can't do it all by himself. Someone has to step up. When you look at Clemson, 
They're obviously going through many changes themselves. Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne are both gone. Some of the best Clemson football players in program history, and now they're both teamed up down in Jacksonville with Urban Meyer. Crazy how football works. Insane how it works. But despite the loss of their star quarterback, despite the loss of their star running back, this Clemson team is still loaded. Just like many of the elite teams, like your Alabamas, your Georgias, obviously Clemson, uh, Oklahoma, Ohio State, these teams reload. They don't rebuild, they just reload. That's exactly what Clemson did. DJ Uyunglele now replaces Trevor Lawrence. And the major reason that we are so high on DJ Uyunglele is not just because of all the hype that he's gotten and because we just knew how great he was coming out of high school, but it's because we got to see him in action last year. And not just this garbage time where Clemson's up 42-0. No, we saw him in legitimate action. Led them to a come-from-behind victory to beat Boston College. And then against Notre Dame. On the road in South Bend, threw for 439 yards, the most passing yards allowed ever by the Fighting Irish. 439 yards in just his second career start in South Bend. Clemson did lose that game, but that showed you what DJ Uyungle is capable of, and it's not a fluke. Everybody wants to say he's overrated. He's not. He's an elite quarterback, and he's got some great pass catchers along with him. I would say that Clemson absolutely owns the pass-catching edge in this game. Justin Ross, Joseph Nagata, EJ Williams, all those guys are there for Clemson. They're there for Clemson to try to exploit one of the best defenses in the country in Georgia. This Clemson offense, guys, they averaged 43.5 points per game last year. They averaged 502.3 total yards per game this last year. We know that Clemson's going to have to do the majority of their damage through the air, though, because Georgia's defense last year was the top-ranked rushing defense in the country. So before we dive into the defense, we're going to reiterate, Georgia has the passing attack, finally, to do some damage. We know they're probably going to have more success on the ground than Clemson will. We're about to get to that. Clemson, I think, can have on the passing edge. You get Georgia owns that rushing edge offensively, but Clemson, to me, owns that passing edge offensively. So there you go. You split that down the middle. You go to the defense. We say Clemson owns the passing edge. They don't own the rushing edge because of how strong Georgia's defense is. The Bulldogs own the number one rushing defense in the country last year. Not just the SEC, but the country. They allowed just 72.3 rushing yards per game. And with a very, very strong and dangerous front seven, I don't really expect that number to change that much. I don't expect Clemson to rack up that many yards on the ground. The front seven is just ridiculous. Jordan Davis up front for Georgia. Devontae Wyatt up there as well. You know, th this front seven for Georgia, that, that defensive line and that linebacking core is going to be one of the best in the country. They were last year, and they will be again this year. Kirby Smart, again, a brilliant defensive-minded coach. What else would you expect? When you look at the rest of Georgia's defense, they did allow 248.7 passing yards per game. If you wanted to find a weak spot in Georgia's defense, it would be in their secondary, at least from last year. Kirby Smart recognized that, went out and added two great guys to add in the secondary, one coming from Clemson and Darian Kendrick, the other from West Virginia and Tyke Smith. But Tyke Smith will not be playing in this game due to injury. So again, plenty of guys on offense that are out due to injury. Or if they do play, will not certainly not be 100%. One of their bigger defensive playmakers that they were hoping to get something out of, Tyke Smith, will not be playing in this game due to injury. So, again, how are they going to fare against this Clemson passing attack? Georgia can shut down the run all day long. It's not going to matter if DJ Uyunglele goes out there and torches them. So the secondary is the key for Georgia in this game. They have to shut down the pass. And that front seven, we know they're going to shut down the run. If they can create press pressure on DJ... Remember, Clemson's offensive line, a little shaky last year. If they are still a little shaky in week one, if they can create pressure on the young quarterback, might force him into, into some bad throws. And obviously, if Georgia's able to win the turnover battle, I believe they'll convert those turnovers into points. Could end up being the difference maker in this game. Something to think about. When you look at Clemson defensively, we talk about Kirby Smart, how great of a defensive mind he is. Clemson arguably has the best defensive mind in all of college football in Brent Venables, their defensive coordinator. He has done an unbelievable job during his time under Davos Swinney. Consistently has a top 10, top 20 defense year in and year out. And that was no exception last year. But the last time we saw Clemson's defense, we saw them get torched by Ohio State in the college football playoff. Allowing 49 points to the Buckeyes in that 21 point loss. That's the last memory we have of Clemson's defense. So everybody's talking about that. Did you see Clemson last time? You really think their defense is going to be that much better from you know late December to now? Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I do. 
Look at who's coming back. Ten starters back on defense from last year for Clemson. Ten starters. And while you want to look, point at that Ohio State game and point at how bad they played there, Clemson on the year still had the 15th ranked defense versus the run. They still had the 15th ranked overall defense in the entire country. And you look at their star players. Brian Breesey coming back on the defensive line alongside Miles Murphy. James Skalski back as one of the best linebackers in the entire country and the leader and anchor of this Clemson defense. He's back in that linebacking core alongside Balin Spector, who was the leading tackler and the sack leader last year for Clemson. Nolan Turner returns in the secondary. You can make a case, guys, that this front seven for Clemson is just as good, maybe even better, some would say, than that Georgia front seven that we just praised. This is going to be a true battle in the trenches in terms of, first off, who can stop the run, second off, who can pressure the quarterback. Can Clemson pressure JT Daniels? Can they shut down Georgia's run game just like we expect Georgia to do to Clemson? And if so, again, this comes down to who can win the battle through the air. That's what it will come down to. Can Clemson or Georgia make the other team become one-dimensional offensively? Because both of these front sevens are absolutely ridiculous. At the end of the day, it could come down to the secondary that makes the biggest play of the day and ends up being the difference maker in the game in Charlotte. That's what it comes down to. So again, guys, these, these two teams, guys, are, are just, to me, you write it down on paper. Clemson might own the edge here, but Georgia owns the edge here. To me, they are so, so even. That's why this matchup and this game is going to be so great. The word I've used with so many people is epic. Number five, number three. How often do you get to see a top five matchup in a regular season to begin with, let alone the first week of the season? The first weekend of college football, you're seeing number five and number three. Again, a game that feels like a college football playoff matchup. This is going to be epic in Charlotte. It is going to be, in my opinion, the game of the year. We've hyped it up that much, and I believe it will live up to the hype. So what do we think is going to happen in Charlotte? I know that's why you're all here. You're here for our official prediction between Georgia and Clemson. I will say this, like we just mentioned, I don't think that either team has much success running the ball. If I had to choose a team that I think will do better on the ground, it's going to be Georgia. I believe Georgia has better success running the ball than Clemson, but I don't think it's that drastic. I think both teams bust out a few big runs here and there, but not that consistently. It would surprise me, honestly, if either team rushed for maybe over 125 yards. That's how strong I believe both these rushing defenses are. That's how strong I believe these front sevens are. So at the end of the day, again, it comes down to which passing attack do I think is better. Each team might bust out a few runs, but it's going to come down to quarterback play, pass catching play, and the secondary, the defense. And right now, I'm looking at all these teams, and I look and I say that Clemson has the edge in that passing game. So we are going to pick Clemson to win this ball game. We are picking Clemson to take down Georgia in Charlotte. Clemson, to me, right now, has the better weapons. I'm not saying they have the better quarterback. I do think DJ Uyunglele is just as good as JT Daniels. Many disagree. But he's a dang good quarterback. He's going to prove it on Saturday. But Clemson certainly does own the wide receiver slash pass catching edge over Georgia right now only because of how injury riddled Georgia is. I do believe that. And again, I look at Clemson as well. They're more healthy than Georgia, not just in the pass catching core, but across the board. I'm taking the team that I believe is healthier, that owns a pass catching edge, and the team that has won the big games before. Kirby Smart has been unable to win the big games at Georgia. Yes, we know he has won a few New Year's Six Bowl games. Yes, we know he won a playoff game and made the national championship against Alabama, but he has failed to defeat the likes of Alabama, fell in the national championship to them, fell in the SEC championship today. Fell in a New Year's Six Bowl game to Texas. I don't care what you say, whether they were motivated or not. Kirby Smart has struggled at times in big games. Fell a few years ago to LSU in the SEC championship. Yes, I know that was Joe Burrow, but still, this is another big game. And I do believe that Davos Winnie owns the coaching edge over Kirby Smart. Coaching edge, health edge, pass catching edge. When me, and me, right now, brief secondary edge, to me, points to a Clemson victory. The three-point favorites going into Charlotte, I expect it to be very, very close. Does not surprise me at all. If you want our official pick for that, of course, you're going to have to sign up for the expert picks. But again, we are going to pick Clemson to win in Charlotte. The number three team taking down the number five team is going to be a phenomenal way to kick off this college football season, guys. You could not ask for a better matchup. You are not going to ask for a better finish than what we're going to see on Saturday night. A fantastic way to kick off this 2021 college football season. And if we're lucky... 
this will be just part one of two between the Bulldogs and the Tigers. So, guys, there you have it. We have Clemson winning the early game of the year in 2021. Again, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in that description below. Again, go sign up for the expert picks. Our first picks come out tomorrow. College football picks and NFL picks will come out every single Wednesday, but you can't access them unless you sign up. So make sure you do that. Do not miss out on that analysis. Do not miss out on the offer. Again, down in the description. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Oh,